bringing Pacific people together. That was the Doobie Brothers. Listen to the music. And uh, today, the very, very good morning to you. And uh, today we'll be uh, talking about the Karatahi team to represent Tonga at the 2023 uh, Rugby World Cup in France and uh, also includes several former Wallaby and All Blacks who have become available in the New World Rugby uh, eligibility rule and uh, also just a bit of highlight to talk about the four, um, former Wallabies Adam Coleman, Lopetti, Timani, Israel Folau has also been named alongside former All Blacks uh, Malakai Fikitoa, Salesi Piotau, Vaea Fifita and George Moala and joining us to speak more about this amount, announcement is the CEO of Tongan Rugby Union Peter Harding with that we say very good morning welcome to the show How are you today? Fantastic. And yourself, you must be already energised. You're hearing this uh, news there, Peter. But first of all, before we get into the questions, uh, but yeah, so how are you right now uh, in terms of preparing with you, yourself and the team? Uh, everything's going quite well. I think um, it's, a, it's a great deal of re- relief for the coach that he's finally put his team together and he's finally put it out there. It's a very, very hard job to pick a team. I bet. So many people play for Tonga and so many people play for it. It's the same for every international team that the coach has got to make some really hard decisions and and um, it's it's very hard for them, every coach, to make those decisions. So I feel a bit of relief that for him that he's finally put the team out there and he can move on to full-time preparation for them. How are the team's emotions right now as we speak? I know that you go naming, but, you know, just from your side and looking at the team, are they more than ready for this World Cup? Um, well, I would assume we've got a very good performance staff led by Samissi Fanur up here, mm. who's very highly qualified performance s and He's been tracking all the professional players for, well, he's been tracking professional players for 10 years now. So he's right on top of how um, everything is put together and how they're going. Uh, we they'll arrive here on the fifth of June, and if you have a look at the squad, I know there's um there's a that they're all professionals, so I would say that they'd be in pretty good nick, and a lot of them have played a lot of a lot of footy this year up in the north, so they probably have thirty games under their belt. So I reckon they'll be in pretty good shape. They probably just need to freshen up a bit. Fantastic, thank you, Pete. Now, is it good to finally have players who haven't been able to represent Tonga due to the eligibility rules? Yeah, no, that's a fa- um, it's a fantastic change. We worked pretty hard with World Rugby to get this across the line. Um, all of us put a significant amount of effort into it, and I just want to thank Joe Schmidt. I don't know if you know, but Joe was the main – he was the one who pushed this and worked very, very hard on it for a year. So oh. I think anybody who is getting any players through this particular change has to thank Joe a hell of a lot because you know, he, he did it all. It, it's great to um, to have these guys back, and if you talk to them and you – you know – they say, look, they play for the other team so they can make money and set up their families, but their heart's in Tonga. So, And that's oh, yeah. absolutely true, that they want to come back and play for Tonga if they uh, if they get the opportunity. But <laughs> sometimes if you have to make a choice between 20000 a game and 600 a game, there's <laughs> not much choice, you know. So when they do come back, they put their heart and soul into it and uh, they... They just, mate, they just become Tongan again. They get into the environment and it changes them, you know. Now, are there any names that stand out particular? Uh, no. <laughs> we probably or are you keeping that a secret? <laughs> Wait till we find out until the game. No, no, I think you've seen the squad and I think that um, this, is, this is a difficult, as I said, it was a relief for um, the coach because he has very big names. There's right. people who've missed out who probably deserve an opportunity. But when you have people like Isaleli and um, and... Celesi and uh, putting their hands up, then you can't deny their quality. And yes. um, sport is a ruthless business. You've just got to pick the best. So I think if you have a look, there are, as you say, there's rock stars in the team, but there's also oh, yeah. a lot of players who came through our under-20s, which is very um, heartening for us. And um, we enjoy having those guys. So I'm hopefully it's a very good mix for the World Cup. Thank you, Pete. Now that the team has been named, what happens now? Uh, they're here on the 5th of July. Um, we have a game which we need to announce in the next next week um, as a warm-up game. Then we'll play Fiji and uh, we head up to Osaka to play Japan. And then we will go to Samoa. And then we have a couple of 
tail off games against Canada and we're in France on the 23rd of August into a camp before we go into the official um, official team base camp. So uh, th there's a lot of activity over the next probably eight weeks. They've got plenty of games, six games to to gel and to get ready. And uh, as I said, we've got all these guys. We've got an amazing opportunity. So the next six weeks are going to be very important. Do you believe a new era in Pacific rugby is in play? I think what we've got now is um, the three CEOs, and which I'm very, very lucky enough to be one of them of the three major countries. We are talking about a lot of opportunities about schoolboy rugby, under 20s tournaments, um, and different aspects like that, also in the women's game. So I think there's a great deal of cooperation between the three unions. Which, to be honest, you know, we, we've been at that level, but we haven't seen this level of cooperation soon. So I'm very much hoping that this does lead uh, to a massive increase in our popularity and being able to bring players back and being able to convince players to play for us because the Pacific rugby supports rugby around the world. Like, it, it wouldn't be the product it is without the players that we produce. It just mm -hmm. wouldn't exist. It would be a very, quite a stale, boring place so I think that um, it would be very good if we could, you know, cooperate more, get help and get what we deserve back from the game for what we actually put into it. Now, how confident are you in Tongan's ability to perform well at the World Cup? Oh, this, this is the best team Tonga's ever had. I don't think anybody is actually disagreeing with that. Mm. But a team of stars isn't a, a team of champions isn't a champion team. So it's going to be up to the staff to pull it together and make sure they pull to you know, and get together for the for the actual event itself. But look, we've got people who are used to the pressure who we, and who have quality. So I'm pretty sure that we can pull off a few surprises, which we actually need to do when we're at the World Cup because it is the group of death, you know. Fantastic, Pete. Before we wrap up, any final messages to the Tongan community who have tuned in? I think this is a great opportunity for um, to support an amazing team. Uh, these guys have put it on the line by coming back to Tonga. Cool, yeah. um, they've all put their hand up and they all do readily admit that this is where they prefer to be playing and would have preferred to have played for their whole life. What we need to do is encourage the next generation to do that as well because, as you see, this is quite an old team regardless of the quality but we want all the young people out there to want to play for Tonga so hopefully this can um, stimulate the next generation to play for Tonga rather than Japan Australia or New Zealand well Pete thank you so much for your time this morning it's been a pleasure having you on the show and we love hearing from you as well so we wish you well and the team and uh, we're looking forward to hear more later on thanks very much